Yeah, I'm uh, Dr. Anil Radhakrishnan. I work in the Department of Ophthalmology uh, and I look after corneal transplantation and related stuff. Today, uh, our one of the residents are going to present a case of orbital cellulitis uh, and how the emergency management was done. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so we'll start. Uh, welcome to ATCM, the emergency medicine channel. Uh, a 44 year old male uh, with no known comorbidities came to the ER with complaints of uh, injury by a, a tree uh, branch uh, to his left eye. On primary assessment, uh, airway was patent, no pooling of secretions, breathing, uh, respiratory rate of 22 per minute and saturation of 98% room air. Uh, circulation, BP was 140 by 80 with a uh, heart rate of 95 per minute. A patient was complaining of pain in the left eye uh, pain score was around 5 by 10 so we started with injection pcm 1 gram iv stat disability wise uh, gcs was e4 v5 m6 uh, and uh, left eye uh, uh, bilateral pupils equally reactive exposure wise uh, temperature was 99.4 degree fahrenheit with a glbs of 123 milligram per deciliter uh, coming to adjuncts to primary survey uh, we took a point of care cbc crp uh, and a VBG. Uh, the point of care CBC CRP showed a total counts of 18,015.53, hemoglobin of 17.1, platelet of uh, 288, and CRP of 386.34. Uh, VBG point of care showed uh, pH of 7.42 with a bicarb of 20 and a PCO2 of 40, uh, creatinine of 3, and there was no uh, sodium potassium or any other electrolyte imbalance. Uh, coming to sample history, uh, patient had no known allergy, uh, he was not on any regular medication, there is no known comorbidity of the patient, uh, last meal was consumed 3 hours back and events, uh, there is alleged history of accidental trauma to the left eye where a tree branch came and fell on his left eye which, uh, followed by watering and redness of the eye 3 days back. It was associated with mild swelling and pain. Uh, the next day, he had vomiting around two to three episodes. After the patient started developing fever. Uh, the next day, the pain increased, the swelling increased, and uh, pus discharge started from the left eye. Uh, that is when he uh, came to seek medical attention. So, uh, that was how the patient presented. Uh, so, to sum up the history, uh, can you just tell yeah, in two yes. sentences? Yeah. So, a uh, 44 year old man, uh, no non comorbidities, okay. came to the ER with complaints of left sided eye swelling, pain, pus discharge, uh, uh, fever since last three days after a uh, tree branch fell on his left okay. eye. Uh, on arrival, uh, patients uh, like some in inflammatory markers were high, the mm. total count of 18,000, CRP of 340. And uh, patient was also having uh, uh, increased creatinine. Okay. AKI was there. Okay. So, on then coming so was, to the uh, was there any treatment taken intravenous? No, uh, no, no. Nothing. Nothing was taken. He so, patient came. didn't do anything for the last uh, three days? No, no. Initially, oh. he went to a small hospital on the third day. Then okay. they were said that you there should go to a uh, okay. bigger hospital. Okay. So, so, around examination. Uh, on local examination, uh, the right eye eyelids were normal with adequate closure. So, tetanus status, tetanus status? On uh, tetanus station, he was uh, tetan uh, taken, sir, two years back. Two years, yes. he was taken, mm -hmm. okay. Uh, so, sir, uh, on mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, sir, on uh, examination, uh, the right eye eyelids were normal with adequate closure. Uh, conjunctiva, there was no congestion, chemosis or discharge. Uh, cornea was clear, anterior chamber, uh, normal depth, pupils reactive and the lens was clear. Uh, left eye, there was periorbital swelling, uh, there was uh, increased temperature on touch, redness was there, uh, lower lid abscess with pus point could be seen, echimosis was there, conjunctival congestion was there, uh, pupil was reactive uh, and the rest of the details could not be seen due to periorbital swelling. Okay. So, okay, uh, pupils were reactive. Pupils were reactive. Uh, vision of the patient? Uh, vision of the patient, so uh, he was like, to uh, the swelling, he was like, uh, like, could not keep his eyes open, like to examine, it was okay. difficult. Mm, okay. Fine. So, so, based on the this impression, what is your uh, 
clinical impression <laughs> uh, initially um, because uh, trauma history is there yeah. followed by uh, sir fever history uh, pain uh, he had pain on moving uh, the uh, eye muscles uh, like uh, moving the eye uh, pus discharge was there so initially we thought of uh, it could be either uh, like it could be orbital cellulitis that is the first uh, thing but okay. since uh, pus pointing was also there it could also be an abscess okay so the what is the other thing uh, you uh, we made a mention that it fell into the eye no yeah. so what will happen if the foreign body gets into the eye it pierces the cornea and goes inside uh, uh, usually uh, as you know uh, vitreous is a sterile yeah. structure and it's almost like a culture media mm. so if you have a bacteria which goes inside the eye and uh, goes past the lens into the vitreous it will cause endophthalmitis so that can be blinding condition mm -hmm. so this also can be blinding but orbital cellulitis is usually it is starting from the orbital cavity mm -hmm. so because of the pressure effect secondarily optic nerve can be affected that mm -hmm. is true mm -hmm. but orbital cellulitis will have other features as you suggested mm -hmm. uh, will have intense pain lid swelling uh, the amount of lid edema would be high it will be moderate to very severe mm -hmm. <coughs> then other important thing is there will be chemosis present mm -hmm. Uh, and uh, the pill be ocular movements will be arrested it will not be there at all mm -hmm. initial stages there may be some movement but later the movement would be totally affected mm -hmm. so in this patient movement was affected yes, i believe so yeah so this is favoring a uh, diagnosis of uh, mm -hmm. this one orbital cellulitis in uh, endophthalmitis if it is only endophthalmitis only inside the eye there is an infection outside it's perfectly normal mm -hmm. so there will be redness there may be some amount of lid edema but it will not be very severe like this mm -hmm. it will not be a tight lid like this and uh, chemosis and all may not be much mm -hmm. unless it is a organism like a uh, this gnb which can cause a lot of inflammation uh, there will not be much of chemosis ocular movements would be normal but in the eye you can see that quite often there will be penetrating injury sometimes you might miss the penetrating injury then in the pupillary area there will be yellow exudate so if you have yellow exudate along with the loss of vision mm -hmm. Uh, and a history of trauma it is end of that so in the end of thalmitis as it progresses it can go uh, and it can go invade the sclera mm -hmm. and then it can cause span of thalmitis and then muscle involvement can be there then just like orbital cellulitis there will be lack of eye movements and all that but by that time vision will be totally gone yes. but the good thing about the orbital cellulitis is it's coming from outside so the vision would be preserved till late in the disease okay so uh so uh, initially uh, uh, we went ahead uh, with an ind uh, since uh, uh, bus pointing and this and swelling yeah. so tree bark much. we know that all these tree barks will have a lot of organisms okay. yeah. i think you know that a uh, lot of microorganisms would be there mm -hmm. uh, both bacteria fungi mm -hmm. uh, viruses parasites everything would be there mm -hmm. and you have to be more aware of especially tree bark fungal can be there okay. then uh, anaerobic infection also mm -hmm. is pretty common if it is contaminated with soil and aerobic infection is pretty common so we went uh, ahead with incision and drainage and we sent to pus for pus culture okay uh, as we said uh, we also went ahead with the uh, ct uh, <coughs> ct uh, orbit and paranasal sinuses okay why is imaging important in this such a scenario uh, sir uh, imaging is important because so uh, one of things is we could look for the sinus like the source of infection if there is any sinusitis active sinusitis which could have led to the infection yeah. if after the trauma any foreign bodies uh, like are there okay, then also good. to the extent of like uh, involvement so especially tree bark and all bark. Uh, when it comes and hits the eye it, if it has gone beyond the eyeball mm -hmm. it will go and then some part may be uh, mm -hmm. lodged inside and it will just break off mm -hmm. so that will be a source of for infection, infection. it will keep on the organisms will keep on multiplying okay. so unless you take it out uh, it will the 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 infection will never get healed so sir uh, ct uh, showed uh, sir left orbital uh, periorbital cellulitis and uh, two tiny hyperdensity uh, two and 1 mm uh, uh, within the inflamed periorbital soft tissue in the lateral or, uh, orbit with wall near the lateral margin of the lower eye eyelid suspicious to be tiny foreign body fragments mm -hmm. and uh, sinusite there was no active sinusitis as such 
So one of the common uh, causes of orbital cellulitis is usually sinusitis. It usually follows hmm. uh, frontal or maxillary hmm. or sphenoidal sinusitis. So because that area, uh, be between separating that, the sinuses hmm. and the orbital cavity, it's only a thin plate of bone. Hmm. It's a very thin film of bone actually. So the organisms can actually come into the orbit and quite often we see in ophthalm patients like that. So they'll be treating absolutely asymptomatic. They'll come suddenly with uh, swelling and uh, they'll say that the eye is puffed up. When you see that, there'll be no eye movements. So they, quite often they'll have this background of sinusitis and they'll have uh, uh, this orbital cellulitis. So that requires admission and IV antibiotic therapy. Uh, sir, so after that we started him, uh, we started the patient on uh, antibiotic treatment. Uh, sir, we started him on, uh, initially sir, the in ER, the stat dose was given Piptas, okay. then we hiked it up to uh, uh, Meropenem, uh, followed by we started on Ticoplanin also. Okay. Um, sir, in view of uh, uh, um, broad spectrum coverage as well as MRSC coverage. Mm -hmm. Uh, as the and also like carbon cell, the, the CRP was very highly very high elevated, oh, yes. so that is slightly unusual. Mm -hmm. So it is better mm -hmm. to give a higher and antibiotic. antibiotic. And so, uh, after that, we also added him up with fluconazole since it's a tea, uh, tree bark, it could yeah. uh, highly be having vegetative or fungal growth. So, then we uh, started on treatment, and patient uh, slowly improved. Mm -hmm. uh, the CRP also started coming down. Mm -hmm. uh, total counts started coming down, the pain resolved, okay. edema yeah. decreased. So, other thing is, uh, was there an abscess in the initial imaging? Imaging, uh, there was a imaging. foreign body you told. Uh, foreign body is yeah. a I think the abscess was partly drained when uh, it, it came out. Uh, yeah. So it is important itself. to make out you know these abscesses. If the abscesses are there, unless you drain it out, it will get never get uh, mm. cured. Mm. So it is important that you, if you there is an abscess and you see that there is fluid inside, you have to drain it. Mm. So either you can go uh, through the orbital route or you can go from the some other route as well. So, uh, so uh, the most uh, common organisms which can be oh, found, yeah. uh, like uh, that cause or vital cellulitis are uh, Staphylococcus and Streptococcus. Other organisms, earlier H influenza used to be common, but after vaccinations, uh, status uh, it has uh, nowadays come down. Other uh, organisms, like uncommon organisms, Fusobacterium, Peptostreptococcus could be there, and gram-negative bacilli such as Pseudomonas, Klebsiella, Morganella could also be there, and fungus. Uh, it could be Aspergillosis, uh, Mucormycosis could also be some causes. That, uh, sir, uh, I think during COVID era we had yeah, quite a few uh, uh, actinomyces infections and all. Yeah. And sir, also uh, very difficult to treat. Uh, <laughs> you have to do debridement mm -hmm. and give liposomal amphotericin B. Very difficult to treat. And sir, mm. uh, it's uh, also important to uh, differentiate between uh, pre uh, pre septal uh, cell, uh, orbital uh, cellulitis and actually uh, post septal orbital cellulitis. So in pre septal, usually it will, the infection will be above the septum. So mostly lid will be uh, involved. Uh, post septal, uh, the eye, uh, the muscles, everything can be, get involved. So uh, in pre septal, there will be eyelid swelling. Uh, their eye pain may or may not be there, but there won't be any pain on eye movement. There won't be proptosis. Ophthalmoplegia uh, is a rare; it's not found usually, and no vision impairment. Rarely chemosis and fever could or could not be there. So pre preceptive cellulitis, as the name suggests, it's anterior, anterior to the orbital to septum. So it's usually the result of a, a hordeolum which mm -hmm. is not responding to treatment. It it causes a surrounding cellulitis. That's all. It's not a major thing, but you have to treat it with antibiotics, that's important. But it has not spread into the orbital cavity at all. So when you see, it's maybe difficult to open up the eyes, but once you open up, you can see that the eyes underneath is perfectly normal. No chemosis, uh, cornea is perfectly normal, movements are normal. But in preceptal, uh, it will be only limited to the anterior uh, part of the orbit. So orbit per se is not in It is anterior to the orbit. And in that, uh, sir, uh, the differential diagnosis of uh, preceptal or uh, uh, postceptal cellulitis, uh, we could think of it could be subperiosteal lapses, it could be orbital lapses, it could be cavernous sinus thrombosis, herpes simplex, 
herpes zoster okay. infection. So, uh, what would be the findings in a cavernous sinus thrombosis? So, cavernous sinus thrombosis, uh, it would be like so if, if, if a unilateral orbital cellulitis suddenly uh, it starts involving the contralateral mobility of eyes, then we should suspect cavernous sinus thrombosis. Also, there would be third, uh, fourth, and sixth nerve involvement in cavernous yeah. sinus thrombosis. Because these nerves are traversing to, through that area, mm -hmm. there will be uh, multiple nerve mm -hmm. biases, three, four, six. Uh, can be affected, then obviously uh, the optic nerve, the vision also so can be severely affected, can then it can rapidly okay. spread to the other eye. Usually there will be associated proptosis as well. So maybe to keeping that in mind and the severity of the infection, they started this higher end. Complications are uh, of orbital cellulitis. Usually, it's cavernous sinus thrombosis, frontal bone uh, men, uh, osteomyelitis. It could lead to meningitis, any subdural empyema, or any brain abscess. And if you have a basal skull involvement, it's very difficult. It will be a recalcitrant infection. You have to be on antibiotics for a very long period of time. ENT people have to keep on uh, debulking it and all. So, it's very difficult to treat. So, it is important to curtail the infection as soon as possible. Uh, so, and then treatment wise, uh, so we have to <coughs> consider uh, aerobic uh, broad spectrum antibiotics. Also, we could we should have an anti anaerobic coverage also. Uh, so, we could go ahead initial uh, initial uh, treatment choices are we can start with um, vancomycin uh, for MRSC co uh, coverage. Uh, vancomycin dose could be uh, like loading dose could be 20 to 35 milligram per kg followed by maintenance of 15 to 20 milligram per kg every 8 to 12 hours. Then with uh, any third generation cephalosporin could be ceftriaxone, could be cefotaxime. Uh, if ceftriaxone, so two gram. Usually, the standard of standard, care good uh, vancomycin for the gram positive coverage. Mm -hmm. For the gram negative, we give one any of the third generation uh, cephalosporins. And mm -hmm. if you are suspecting mm -hmm. anaerobes, mm -hmm. like in this scenario, we'll be giving uh, metoprolol as well. Anything more? <laughs> oh, yes, any other, anyone else want to discuss anything else? <laughs> okay, thank you. Thank you.